Uh, this first slide is up there. It's uh, Saad. Yeah. Saad Amla from Stanford University. It's a postdoc. And it's uh, about a, I thought it was a 20 cent centrifuge, but it's a paper fuge. Well, it's a 20 cent paper fuge. You ready, Paul? Go on. Go for it. Okay. All right. Thank you, John. I'm going to tell you about a low cost centrifuge. And to give you a context, a few of us at Stanford in the bioengineering department think about frugal science. Another way of thinking about this is doing diagnostics under a tree. So when I look at these community health workers in rural parts of Congo doing diagnostics for malaria and African sleeping sickness, I'm shocked at the tools they're using because these instruments, a microscope, centrifuges, and other tools that they're using are not designed for these field conditions. And so in our lab, we think about low-cost tools in terms of how do we bring, bring these tools under a tree. These are electricity-free, low-cost, and they're simple. So you can, they're portable, you can carry them. What you're not seeing under the table over here is a power generator that powers this. So a previous uh, object from our lab, is instrument from our lab, is a $1 microscope. I'm not gonna talk about that. But you'll quickly see that I'm a walking laboratory. I have another tool in my pocket right here. To give you a little bit of a zoomed out context, why a centrifuge? If you were to walk into a hospital today at Stanford and you were to do a test, they're probably going to, the doctor's going to take a droplet of blood and do a molecular assay because it's very accurate. They're going to do a PCR and they're going to use an ultra centrifuge. But if you do the same thing, I, just, I was just came back from Madagascar a few weeks ago, and if you walk in a com community health clinic, they're going to do a paper-based assay, a rapid diagnostic test. It's not as accurate, but it's decentralized. You can carry these. And so I think there's a design opportunity. If you solve the centrifugation problem in the future, we can think about molecular tests, which are very, very accurate and bring them to the field. So I'm going to show you the paper fuge. I'm carrying it in my pocket. But just to give you a context and force you to think about this for a second, this is a fundamental problem of converting human energy, muscle energy, into rotational energy. This is, I brought a few demos. This is an electric centrifuge, costs a few thousand dollars. Now anybody who uses a centrifuge over here at some point in their life, just shout out an RPM that you think a typical centrifuge operates at. About 6,000, 10,000 RPM, that's what this does. Two minutes, it can separate out plasma from blood. Now, people have been thinking about this, and as engineers, we build devices by going into the kitchen, a garage. This is a salad spinner. How many of you use a salad spinner in your kitchen, right? It goes about a few hundred RPM. Imagine separating plasma from blood. It takes a lot of time. It takes 20 minutes. This is a group from Harvard, right? Egg beater. Imagine doing this for 20 minutes. A lot of fatigue. So. I'm going to pause for a few seconds and I want you to really think hard. How would you convert muscle energy into rotational energy? I'm going to show you one of the, the way we've come up with But if you have a better idea, I'm all ears. So this is what we've come up with. This is a paper fuge. A few of you might have played with this as a child. Now I'm going to ask you a puzzle. How fast do you think this is spinning? You have to shout out a number. Anyone else? So you said 1,000 RPM? It's 20 cents, it's hardly anything. It's not 200 RPM, it's not 2,000, it's 20,000 RPM. That's about 10,000 G-forces, it only weighs a gram. It's paper, you can dispose of it after use. It requires no electricity and it's simple. Even a five-year-old can use it. It's inspired by child's toy. So what can you do with it? I can take capillary, take 10 microliters of blood, load that capillary up, and within a minute and a half, I can separate out the plasma and get what is known as a hematocrit. A quarter billion people in the world suffer from anemia, and this is a 20 cent test right now that you can do for anemia. But we can do even better. We can do infectious disease diagnostic, malaria. So when malaria parasites, falciparum actually infects the red blood cells, it alters the density, and you can do what's known as a quantitative Buffy code. I won't go into detail, but you can take advantage of the density difference between an infected red blood cell and a healthy red blood cell and do a very, very fine, fine separation in about 15 minutes and stick it under this fold scope with fluorescence, my, fluorescence modality, here's parasites. And this is what we just did in uh, rural parts of Madagascar for 50 patients just to do field tests with this. I want to emphasize that this is not just frugal engineering. We think about this frugal science. And even though this might be a simple toy, it actually has complex physics. Unlike a traditional centrifuge that spins at a constant RPM, this has an oscillatory type of behavior. You can see that every time you pull, it spins up and goes down. 
So we spend a lot of time figuring out the physics of this. I won't go into detail at this point. This is not the right venue, but the paper is up on BioArchive and it's accepted right now. So I encourage you to read this and talk to me. And we went through a lot of work to figure out this as well as build an experimental platform to actually match our theory with our experiments. And you can see here that it agrees quite well. Now, why did we do all of this? Here I'm showing you a scaling plot of RPM as a function of one variable. We have nine variables that we can optimize and force. And we find with our theory that as we change the disk radius and bring it down here almost to the size of a US quarter, we've set a new record, 120,000 RPM. I just want to say one word. We are not stopping here, and that's why we did the theory. Our goal is 1 million RPM. I'll stop right now. Thank you. Thank you.